and we've been trying to get a beehive started for her, backyard beekeeper, but she just got a call from a neighbor friend who apparently has a wild hive in a wall somewhere, and uh, so we're gonna go over and check it out. It's a bee emergency. These days, if at all possible, we don't wanna just call a fumigator and kill them. If we can relocate hives, healthy hives, good hives, non-Africanized hives, non-aggressive hives, we can relocate those hives to bee rescues or to a, an urban or suburban beekeeper, a backyard beekeeper. That's the way to go because we're losing bees. So anyway, uh, we're just gonna grab some gear. I'm gonna run over to Amy's friend's house, check out what's going on. These are chickens. Should be able to tell by the way they behave whether they are Africanized. If it's an aggressive hive, it may have to be put down. If it's not, and we can get to it and move the honeycomb successfully, then hopefully the queen will move with it. And if the queen goes, all the bees will go and we can move this hive from one location to another. And yes, this is my Yoda hat, which has nothing to do with beekeeping. It's just cool. So this hive is located behind this wall panel. Here it is. It's not a big hive, but most wild hives aren't big hives. And all we're gonna try and do is figure out what parts of this hive is usable and transplant it into the knife is right here. this box. In the order that we find it. about there. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so we weren't planning on doing anything today, but we ended up doing the whole thing, I think. <laughs> this, oh, here, this is my friend, Amy. Amy, Hi, everybody. This, this is for Amy. These, this is going to be her new bees. And what we did is we took some empty bee frames out of our Langstroth hives, that's what they're called, and uh, we kind of measured them up against the hive, the, the honeycomb that was here. We very carefully, as possible, cut out the honeycomb so that it fit inside those frames, and then we rubber banded it together inside the frames, and we put them in the hive box. And then we scooped literally as many bees as we could into the hive box uh, and then you wait because what you're hoping for is you're hoping to get the queen in there. Wherever the queen goes and decides to stay, that's where everybody else goes. See, this little box, this is what we call a nook, which is a temporary box. It's short for nucleus. And oh, look at, yep, they're this, all their, their butts up. Yeah, see these, see these little workers here with their butts in the air? They're basically blowing pheromones out, basically telling anybody who's still flying, she's over here, she's over here, because the queen and about 20,000 bees are now inside this box. All we did after we moved everybody here uh, is we went and took lunch. And uh, what, we've been gone for what, 90 minutes probably? Mm -hmm. During which time, all the bees have disappeared out of the air and most of them are here. Now there's still a few flying around, so now, that we're pretty sure we got the queen. Now we're just gonna go home and we're gonna wait till dusk because bees, just like chickens, put themselves to bed at night. So by sunset, every bee that is still alive that was a part of this hive will have gone inside this box and all we'll have to do is come back and lower the little trap door, which I'm not gonna do right now to hurt anybody, close that off, we're gonna take them to Amy's house. They're gonna to have to get reoriented. So we're not out of the woods yet because they might not like their new home, but we're hoping, and if they do, then Amy will now have a new wild hive that she has domesticated uh, into her own backyard rescued. hive box. So we will keep you posted. Okay, we're back. The sun has set. If the bees are still here, they should have put themselves to bed. There are exactly zero bees outside. Let me close this. Let's go check the wall real quick again. Yeah, 
Nothing happened in here. Nothing. Totes. Totes gone. They're all secure. So, just carry it out to the car and get it home. What you got there, Tina? Box of bees. <laughs> here we are in Amy's yard. This is her actual full-size hive. Let's check the hive out there, dark. That's where they're going to end up living if they stay here for a few days and feel comfortable. Then we'll move those frames into the lower part of this full-size hive, and we'll be off to the races. Okay. We're here with Amy. It's been what, four weeks. Yeah, four, it's been uh, four weeks. Four weeks since the bees have been sitting in their nook box, and they've been making great progress. So our plan today is to move them to their final home. We're going to transfer the frames that we put in there four weeks ago into the final hive and give them more space. What smoking a hive does, since bees communicate through pheromone signals, is uh, a lot of people think it calms them down. It doesn't really. It actually kind of panics them a little bit, but it, they respond as if they're calming down because the hive mind uh, that kind of communicates as one entity, the smoke disrupts that and turns it into individual stupid little brain cells that don't know what to do on their own and so they tend to kind of chill out and that gives us the opportunity to get in there and mess with them a little bit without hurting them or too many of them coming at us. Not that it matters in the suit, but it matters to them. Yeah, they are busy, busy. And it doesn't look like anything has disconnected. So let me take this top. Yeah, let's super take off. that top super off. Set these gals right here. And we're gonna take off the control board. This is a little thing called the queen excluder. It allows ultimately for the bees, the worker bees, to come into the upper container but the queen has to stay low. Since she's bigger than everybody else, she can't get through that size mesh, but the worker bees can. We don't want heat uh, from our smoker. We just want the white smoke. We don't want to burn anybody. You see as the smoke goes on, they all kind of retreat down into the frames. And that's a good thing. Look at that, they are so... Now you see, we Is rubber band them uh, the other day, but they've actually cut the rubber bands, most of them, and have pulled them out of the hive over and the last two or three And threw them on the ground weeks. down there. But they, oh yeah, they're doing great. Okay, one in. You've got yourself a fully functioning hive here, <laughs> girl. Yay! Honey, this... These are brood, brood, so there are baby bees wow. in here. This is a nursery, and it's a really well-developed nursery. And yeah. we've got it on the other side, too. So the queen, she's going to town. <laughs> cool. Okay, break. Let's just make sure nobody's underneath our frame. We don't want to crush anybody. Slide it over. Well, okay. So that first frame was a lot of honey. Yep. This is all brood. Oh yeah, look at this aren't capped out. These are brood but not capped off. You can see, see all the little see white the little, little, little white worms, worms in, there. in there. Little bee worms. Yeah, can mm -hmm. I move and so you can see in there? See all that? Little worms? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Adorable. <laughs> this is a very non aggressive hive. Even as we're standing here, there are a bunch of bees flying around, of course, because we're disturbing them, but and there's a couple of them landing on us. But believe me, if this was an Africanized hive, we would be getting hit. Boom, 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 boom. Bees flying through the air is not bees attacking you. So as I stand here in the midst of all this, what is there, one or two of them on me? Yeah. That's great. All right, so we use brushes basically just to kind of move their delicate little bodies around oh, so we don't have to mess with, with them. Big, giant oh yeah, do you pollen. see that? I don't know if you can see that, Tina. Big giant pollen on her legs right here. You see those orange? Oh, she's going down in there now. Oh, right. here she comes. We'll see some more. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got lots of healthy brood. Oh, yeah. They. This is perfect timing because they are getting ready for a major expansion. Cool. Interesting. If you ever have a chance to watch uh, bees collecting pollen around, let's say, a flower watch. bed, focus on one individual bee. Despite there being 10 different kinds of flowers, you will see that she's only moving from blossom, purple blossom to purple blossom to purple blossom. That's her job on that run. 
She won't be picking up pollen from the red flowers or the yellow flowers, only those. And so when she brings them back to the hive, they all get stacked into the honeycomb in color codes. And that's why we end up seeing different colored pollen cells. It's all honey Because right they here. keep it all separated. Yeah, this is uncapped honey cells. You can see there's shiny liquid in there. So they haven't filled the cell up completely yet. And they're still uh, blowing air over the cell uh, in order to get the nectar, the water content evaporated out of the nectar, which thickens it. It's like reducing a sauce on the stove. That's how nectar, along with some enzymes inside the bee, goes from very watery, sugar water, down to thick, pasty honey. Yeah, so now we're gonna do, just like we did before, we're gonna do a bee dump. Okay. See how many bees are hanging around inside here? So what is the gentlest way of handling them? Well, not physically coming into contact with them, because you could always crush somebody or mess up a wing. So we're just gonna... Let gravity do the hard work. Within an hour or so, the singles will start going out and all these bees that have been displaced will find their way back into the hive all on their own. So by tonight, the whole hive is uh, intact. Eventually, this hive is gonna expand into the upper box. It's the upper super that we take the honey from. Down here, this is all for them. Everything they put down here is completely for the benefit of the hive. The upper box will become the pantry, those are the frames that will be only honey. Because the queen can't come up through the queen excluder, she'll never have a chance to walk on these frames up here and lay eggs. Because when you're collecting honey, you don't want bee eggs, you don't want to collect bees, you want to collect honey. Because so the queen has to live down here, there will only be honey to steal. So this is it. New hive, it's all filled up. The girls are down here. A few of them are still confused, but that won't be an issue because tonight they will be all inside. They're looking to figure out how to get inside right now. Amy, thoughts? I'm totally excited that we got them in their big box finally and looking forward to uh, our next video of harvesting honey.